Okay, they absolutely had to have that win. You and I have been talking about it. Their schedule coming up is like a gauntlet of death. Uh, you've got the Chiefs, you've got the Eagles, you've got the Cowboys. Anything that you saw on Sunday, Luke, that made you feel a little bit better about this team going into that gauntlet of death? Yes, Jay, there's a lot of great things they did offensively. And let's be honest here, this Jets defense is legit. Yeah. They are not a slouch defense. They have played everybody tough. And they came out here today, and this is where I knew this was going to be a good day. Last week, we talked about the start the Bills had and how bad it was. This week, they kicked the ball. Boom! Huge hit. Caused a turnover. That was the spark that this team needed. I thought it set the tone for the day. And again, let's get into this offense. James Cook was electric tonight. He did a great job. He had 17 carries, 4.3. They committed to the run enough where it, it basically made this pass game a lot easier for Josh. Khalil Shakir has been coming on. I mean, he had the big play today, but Josh spread the ball around. He had numerous guys, six guys with more than one catch, which was a great stat for him. What I really liked, though, which is not surprising, was the no turnovers. Yeah. I, the turnover Josh did have was a Hail Mary at the end of the half. He's just throwing it up. So I'm not counting that one. As far <laughs> as actual play went, the guy did not turn the ball over. The Bills looked dominant. We've talked about it so many times, Jay. They have great players on this team, and they put it together against a great defense. Now it'll be a lot tougher now to be consistent when you have somebody on the other side that can actually score points, not the Jets offense, to add a little <laughs> bit more pressure. I thought it was interesting that Sala finally did not commit to Zach Wilson next week. That's the first time that's happened all season. Are you... Are you more impressed that they were able to come back from that late deficit? I mean, it was pretty late when they were down 26-14. Or are you more concerned that they allowed themselves to get down against a team that's clearly not as good as them? I mean, there's cause for concern. But in that, when you phrase it like that, Jay, I got to say I'm more impressed with the comeback. Nice. The old Lions, which I've been guilty of, you know, thinking they would revert back to, do not win this game. And we say it time and time out all year. The new look Lions find a way to do it. I mean, with four minutes left, being down two scores, they've got to drive the field. It was very, very impressive. And I'll say this, Jay, the Lions struggled to throw the ball all game. Non-two-minute drives, they had 48 yards of passing. And why I thought this was impressive was they had a 75-yard drive, 73 of which at the end of the half were throwing the football. Then they got to come out and do their same two-minute operation to score, which was a 71 yards through the air. And then you got to come and do it a third time. You don't have that many two-minute plays. Right. And this is the NFL. You know teams are going to react. They're going to adjust. You've just burned this team with two long, extended two-minute drives. And Jared Goff, who had had not a great game up until that point, found a way to get it done. Again, I talk about the mentality, the pressure that's on this team. There's a lot of good things that happened in the last four minutes in that game for the Lions. That being said, they still need to clean up this situation because if they're one seed, which I know they're hoping they will be, they cannot have these moments because better teams will burn them. The, uh, the one seed's absolutely in play for this team. It's incredible. It's a tough loss for your Seahawks. <sighs> I know that. But this is the thing. You know, I keep talking about how tough the Bills' schedule is. Seattle's might be actually even harder. You got the Niners, you got the Cowboys, you got the Niners again, you got the Eagles coming up. Geno's injured. We don't know his status. Uh, and they're playing this Thursday against the Niners. How badly did they need this one? Badly, yeah. Jay. And, again, this is a middle-of-the-road Rams team. They're in the division. You've already lost to them once. This is a game you need to have. I understand you're on the road. And trust me, as a guy who's been there many times, this team, the, being the Rams, gives us problems and has for the last decade. But you've got to find a way. And they just you know, gets down to the last second. They don't make the field goal. But in my opinion, there are so many other moments that should have prevented this, this being one of them. The Rams yeah. struggled to move the ball. The defense for Seattle had played well all game. I understand Drew Locke's in there. He's trying to make a play. But you can't throw the pick. You know, you punt the ball there. You make Matt Stafford drive the field. Again, the offense had struggled. I think it's a different ball game. And even late in the game there, what was tough to watch was when Geno completed that ball to DK, there was a lot of time left for them to get a few more yards, shorten that field goal up. Yeah. And I promise you, we talked about two minute with Pete Carroll so many times, Jay. It was nauseating. <laughs> and now you wonder why we do it because we get in that moment and we really struggled to figure out what was going on. Geno said his headset went out. I don't really think that's an excuse for the offense. And we miss a field goal. And now we have the Niners next week. Yeah. 
It's tough. And it's not, it's I should great. mention Myers had made like 15 straight oh. field goals going into that. So he was red hot. I understand why Pete thought, okay, let's roll the dice. He could probably hit it. But, uh, yeah, it's a tough loss for Seattle. It's the kind of game you'd expect. You've been so impressed with this Browns defense under Jimmy Schwartz all season. Uh, they can still be a factor. But can they be a factor led by Dorian Thompson Robinson, <laughs> yeah. the law firm of quarterbacks? Yes, I'm going to say yes on that, Jay. And the reason being is the defense is that elite. DTR, yeah. as they now call them, I think will be limited. But I think part of the reason they have him playing right now over P.J. Walker is I hope they, you know, build into him and in, in develop a little bit. But let's get back to this defense here. I mean, here's some stats from today's game. And I understand that the Steelers offense is not great. But if you take out the one play to Jalen Warren, which was a 74 yard run, they held this team to 175 total yards, had three sacks, Pickett only threw for 168. And again, if you take out the big long run there, they kept them under 100 yards rushing. Yeah. I mean, it was a complete beat down. And the only thing they didn't do was take the ball away, which you saw last week when they played the Ravens, they were able to do that too. And I think what makes this defense so special is to me they don't have a weakness. A lot of these good defenses are either great against the run so they can, you know, help out on the back end in passing or they have a great secondary but up front they're, you know, so so. Right. This defense is stout across the board. Miles Garrett is an absolute oh freak. <laughs> and all DTR is going to need to do is really find a way to score 20 and they're going to be right in every single game. It's going to be fun to watch. You know, it's gonna also going to be fun to watch the Monday night. We got a great matchup. And I'm not even going to bring up Taylor Swift. I won't bring her up. <laughs> Here we go, Luke. Chiefs, two and a half point favorite. Super Bowl rematch. Remember, Casey won that one by three points. Eagles are eight and one. Chiefs are seven and two. Pre-game at six Eastern. You're going to join me afterward. What are you? What are you thinking for this one? Jay, I like? gripe on here all about all the time about bad football. This will not be one of those games. No. There's going to be good football on both sides of the ball here. I cannot wait. And these two teams well rested. Right? Juggernauts. Juggernauts. It's going to be a lot of fun. And after the game, join Luke and myself for this show. We follow every primetime NFL game this season.